Some great teams dominate the regular season, others shine in the playoffs. Doing both makes you truly epic. That's why we're celebrating the top 10 legendary teams today on The Lineup. Welcome to The Lineup, the game show that's really proud of those Golden Seals for finally becoming Golden Knights. I'm your host, Adam Reid. Let's see what guests we've got lined up. Welcome to the show, Anakin Slade. You are a hip hop artist known for your sports anthems. And you come from a little background there of uh, pro wrestling events you used to do in your backyard with these guys? Yeah, you know, we, we grew up, that's my brother over there, Jay Farrar, and so we, we wrestled a lot when we were kids, and we decided to uh, do it legally at one point in an actual ring. All right, all right, well, welcome to the show. Thank you. You're paired up with Elias Dufexis. You're an actor, also known as being the voice of Adam Jensen, and you participated in these. What was I your did. name? What was your wrestler's name? My name was, a, uh, was Twisted Steel which was justified, I think. My, but it worked because my tag team partner was Sex Appeal, so together we were Twisted Steel and Sex Appeal. Look at this. Which made perfect sense. Absolute sense, it made sense to have you guys on the show. Thanks for taking the time. You're facing off against Team Red. Mo Khan, you're a sportscaster, and recently you got a chance to meet one of your childhood heroes, uh, Hall of Famer Tim Raines. Yeah, and I was like a kid out there meeting him. Couldn't believe it. he was in front of my face, and my jaw dropped to the floor, and I was super happy to meet Tim Raines, and now a Hall of Famer going to Cooperstown. Well done, and you're gonna be paired up with Jay Farrar, you're a radio host that's got some sort of World Book of Guinness Records claim to fame? Yes, I'm in the Guinness Book of World Records, Adam. I played the longest softball game ever. How long was it? It was about uh, in the vicinity of 95 hours. 95 hours? Yes. And yeah. how, how does one play 95 hours of softball? Uh, one doesn't. One coasts through 95 <laughs> hours of softball. Through shifts, I gather. With, yeah, with a lot yes. of adult beverages and uh, paramedics. A lot of water. Near, a lot of yeah, water. nearby. Water. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. My picture's in it, too, by the way. It is. The Spoker World Records. Well yes. done. Well done. Thanks for being here, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Over the next three periods, our two teams are going to engage in a battle of knowledge and strategy on their way to creating a list of the top 10 legendary teams. The hockey pros at Watch Mode have selected 20 teams who they feel are most likely to make this list. Gentlemen, this is your draft pool. This pool is made up of teams that made their mark on hockey history in one way or another. For franchises who had multi-season dynasties like the Oilers in the 80s or the Canadians in the 1970s, we've selected just one of their seasons. You'll find teams who took home the cup and great teams that just came up short. Just for fun, we're gonna hide the names of two picks. Those are our wild cards. You can pick those at any time. And we've also selected a team that we feel is most likely to be at the top of that list, and that is our most valuable pick, the Montreal Canadiens of 76, 77. They're off the table for now. All right, Team Blue, we've seen dynasties in the 80s and 70s. Have we seen a dynasty recently in the NHL? Uh, I'd say the Blackhawks are the closest you're gonna get. They've won, what, three and five years? Three and, three and six. Three and six years. Uh, with guys like Taze and Kane, I mean, those guys are gonna be Hall of Famers. So I think, I don't know, it depends on what your definition of a dynasty is, right? What do you think? I think if you win every second year in a, in a, spirit, in a span of six years, that, that's, that's pretty much a dynasty. Kind of like the Giants did in Major League Baseball. Okay, teams, I'm liking this. Let's get started. In the entry draft, each team will have a chance to pick some teams to get them started. We'll go back and forth, old school playground style, until both teams have their first three picks. Team Blue, you won the coin toss, therefore you get to pick first. Who will it be? It is going to be the 2001-2002 Detroit Red Wings. Arguably one of the best teams of all time. Ah, all right. Yeah, all we're right, going to go with the Edmonton Oilers of 83-84, please. 1983-84 Edmonton Oilers. This would be their first ever cup, as they'd win three more within the next four seasons, getting revenge against the Islanders by beating them in five games. Set franchise records with wins, 57, points, 119, and the NHL record for goals in a single season with 446 goals scored. Wayne Gretzky wins Art Ross for the fourth straight year. Good pick. Counter pick blue. We are going to take the 1955-1956 Montreal Canadiens. Going old school. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what do you got? You got some of the bed with Jacques Plante starting off. Five in a row. Five in a row, five cups the in a beginning. row. The beginning. The beginning. All right. Your counter pick, Team Red. We're going to go with uh, Anakin's favorite team. Yeah. The 1962-63 Toronto Maple Leafs. Bold. The, wow. The Bold pride. The, the pride of Toronto. Sickening. The they're, six. Still, they're still celebrating the that one. I just called you all on that pick. I want to know what your counter pick is. Your final pick. Our final pick, I believe, is... Oh, there it is. We need a pick? 
The 1969-1970 Boston Bruins. Bobby Orr! First cup since 1941, finished with 40-17 and 19 record with 99 points in the season, with Bobby Orr leading the league in points at 120, which would bag him the Art Ross Trophy. Orr was tripped as he scored the game-winning goal in the final, creating that famous image of him celebrating in midair. Good pick. All right, let's go. Final pick, Team Red. Nice mediocre pick there. Okay, we're going to go with the 93-94 uh, New York Rangers. Brian Leach. Sergey Zuboff. <laughs> Sergey Zuboff. Zuboff. Mike Zuboff. Richter. Yeah. yeah. When Leak. you think hockey, you think <coughs> Jeff Bukaboom. Zuboff and Brian Leach. Jeff Bukaboom. Yeah. Yes. Going way back. Darius Kasparitis. <laughs> Team Red. Which I have a case of, by the way. <laughs> Team Red, out of curiosity, when you're making your picks, you're ranking your picks, yep. what makes a team truly legendary for you guys? What are you guys looking for in your picks? Uh, uniforms. Yeah, how <laughs> yeah. nice the uniforms well, that's are. It. It's yeah. just the color of the uniform. The Rangers had some nice uniforms. Well, if you notice the symmetry, it's all blue uniforms that we picked. So it's I the think classic. Na na names of players really come out. I mean, the amount of Hall of Famers that they have, how stacked they really are. That's something that's very glaring when you're looking at the team. I'm not really sure about their season record. And Real quick, are Cups important for you guys in terms of legendary teams? Do they have to have won multiple Cups? Oh, you have, you have to go with that. With players on an individual level, no. But teams... I mean, you there you can kind of hold them accountable on whether they've won the Stanley Cup or not. I will say this. You guys are off to a great start with three strong draft picks, but that was the easy part. Gentlemen, it's time for the next round. Game night. If our guests want the best possible teams for these next seven draft picks, they will need to rely on their hockey knowledge because this game night is all about trivia. Every time a team answers a question correctly, they get to draft first. The first two questions are a one-on-one -on -one trivia showdown. Whoever buzzes in first gets to answer. If they get it wrong, the other team can steal. If neither of them get it right, the person who buzzes in first wins the round and gets the pick. Elias, Mo, step on up. Come on, Elias. Good, good luck, Mo. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, good luck, Elias. He already buzzed it. I think your Casparitis is acting up. Yeah, it's hurting. Relax, dude. Here we go. Yeah. Your question. Life's tough for expansion teams, and of course it takes a few seasons before they can really get a strong footing in the league. However, they are expected to at least put up a fight. Your question is, which California expansion team holds the record for most losses in a single season? Mo. San Jose Sharks. That is correct. Oh, oh. San Jose Sharks. In 1992-93, the Sharks oh, were 11, 71, and 2. They lost seven teams games in a row in their second NHL season. And their best goalie, Artis Urbe. Remember Artis Urbe? White Finished season with a 4.11 goals against average. <laughs> well done, Team Red. We'll have <laughs> you back you. in your positions. Let's yeah. pull up the draft pool. Yeah. Team Red, you've earned the right to pick first. Who will it be? We're going to go with the Calgary Flames. 1988-89. All right. Any particular reason? Tell them why, Mo. Only team to win on four mice. Mic drop. Okay, Is you're counting. Lanny, Lanny McDonald, the mustache. He right. beat your boy Pat Roy, did he not? Yeah. yeah. So wait, we get a counter pick. That's now? correct. Oh, team Blue, it's your pick. Oh, 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 oh. You guys, are you reading correctly? <laughs> we are. <laughs> did you miss? I have my glasses on. We need your pick, Team Blue. We need your pick. Two eighty-three New York Islanders. Islanders man. Whoa! Oh. Goaltender Billy Smith would win Conn Smythe, and Mike Bossy would score hundred and forty-four points in a regular season and playoffs combined. Swept the Oilers in four games to take home their fourth Stanley Cup. Huge pick. All right, moving on. Brotherly challenge. Anakin, Jay, come on, on let's, up. Go, let's go. Our first brother challenge on the show. I'm liking this. He's the Keith Primo over here. Yeah. Thanks for dressing up uh, today, by the way. <laughs> My mother, mother would be proud. <laughs> Gentlemen, your question is, which battling Islanders goaltender backstopped the team to a record 19 consecutive playoff series to win in the 80s? Oh, team Blue. Billy Smith. That's correct. <laughs> ah, yes, yes, you picked him yes. out. Good. That is correct. Billy he Smith deserved no less. was the only goaltender inducted way. into the Hall of Fame in the 1990s. Well done, Team Blue. Lucky. Back at your position. We'll pull up the draft pool once again. Team Blue. Okay, relax. There. It's your pick. Who will it be? Oh, God, we didn't even think about oh. this. <laughs> uh, we are going to go with the 1991-1992 Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Penguins. Penguins. Yeah, Second sure. straight cup victory as they swept the Blackhawks in four old. games. Coached by NHL legend Scotty Bowman, despite finishing fourth in the Wales Conference, they would beat the Capitals, Rangers, Bruins before meeting with Chicago. Mario Lemieux wins the Conn Smythe and Art Ross. I've heard of him. Good pick. Team Red, your counterpick. That's going to be tough. What do you think, man? 
Yeah, yeah. We're going to go with the 2012-2013 Chicago Blackhawks. Ooh, we talked about them earlier in the show. You guys approve. That's okay. Yeah, it's with okay. It's okay. Right. Yeah. Good yeah. pick. Sure. Yeah. These good? pick. These pick. All right, for these next two questions, we're upping the stakes. Instead of getting one draft pick for a correct answer, teams will win two. Also, the winner of this round will get to force a trade on the other team, so they can take their least desirable pick and swap it out for the other team's top pick. I'll read out a question that will require a team to place four items in the right order. Teams can choose to play the question or pass it. Whoever plays it has 25 seconds to talk it through and put the items in the correct order. Being right wins you the next pick. Team Red, this question's for you. Some teams would kill just for one cup, while others have some to spare. Place these teams in order from most Stanley Cups to fewest. Before I give you your options, do you wish to play? Or you could always pass. We wish to play. We wish yes, to play. Sir. Your options are Detroit Red Wings, LA Kings, Toronto Maple Leafs, Chicago Blackhawks. Your timer starts now. Team Blue, out of curiosity, we've seen teams from different eras. Um, if you could choose one era that would be considered the golden age in the NHL, which one would it be for you guys? It's tough to pick the golden age because it depends on what type of brand of hockey you like. Like if you took the 80s, you got high scoring hockey, you got Gretzky in his prime and Messier. Um, I don't know, would you, would you pick the... Uh... I, think, I think the 50s, the, the late 50s, early 60s, where you had all those kind of guys like Beliveau, Richard, Gordie Howe, I was going to say Bobby that because Montreal Canadiens did really well in that, right? Well, yeah. yeah, but they were also, you know, overlap with some of the great players from that era. Well so. said, well said. All right, Team Red, let's figure out what we have. We asked you to place these teams in order from most Stanley Cups to fewest. Toronto Maple Leafs, Detroit Red Wings, Chicago Blackhawks, LA Kings. That is a correct order. You said Toronto Maple Leafs, Detroit Red Wings, Chicago Blackhawks, LA Kings. Correct yep. answer. Well done. That's how we do. Solid. Super easy, but solid. Men and Blazers, boys. <laughs> Men and Blazers. You've earned yourself two picks. We'll get your first one. All right. What do you think, Jay? Okay. Let's go with uh, Red Wings. We need your pick? Yeah. 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 1949, 1950, Detroit Red Wings. Your second pick? 1998-1999, Dallas Stars. Yeah. Okay. Stage is set for a huge counter hit here, uh, Team Blue. Who are you going with? Good luck. Your two picks. We're going to take a 1974-1975 Philadelphia Flyers, the dirtiest team in the history Bernie of the NHL. Bernie Peraza, goaltender. That's how the box year, boys. Huge year for him. Yeah. Their second pick. It's getting thin out there. <laughs> yeah. But since I remember 1926 yes, 27, those days were wonderful. What a riveting team. Yes, they were. Oh, they're, they're doing shtick. Yeah, yeah, you, guys all right. shtick you know what? Unfortunately for you, these guys have all the power right now. You get to swap out any team mm -hmm. on their list for a team that you have. Who will it be? Just take the Senators. Bring, us, bring us the rocket, Adam. The 1955 56 oh, Montreal Canadiens. Quite riveting now. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. You can have the And Red who Wings. will you be giving away? Oh, let's, uh, <laughs> uh, we can start us. Yeah. We need your, we need your swap. We need your, you guys can have the Dallas Stars from. The Dallas 19, Stars. The, How does the that make you feel? The, the, the team. Team. I feel cheated, frankly. I feel cheated. Craig yeah. and I like, Dallas I feel like nice the place. fact that they got those first two was, was enough of it. I advantage. felt cheated when you came home from the hospital. Yeah. This okay. is your, I agree. guys, this is your chance of redemption. For this question, the winner once again gets two picks and they will get to go on the power play, meaning they get to send one of their opponents to the penalty box for the next round. All right, this question's for you, Team Blue. Few teams accomplished the feat of winning both the President's Trophy as the league leader in points and the Stanley Cup in the same season. Place these teams in chronological order of their double trophy seasons, starting with the most recent. Before I give you your options, Team Blue, the pressure's on. Do you wish to play or pass? That's a hard question, man. I'm gonna pass. You're gonna pass? I think we should, yeah, pass. Think we should pass. See if these guys Look can at the strategy yeah. from Team Blue. Team Red, your options are Detroit Red Wings, Dallas Stars, Colorado Avalanche, Chicago Blackhawks. Your timer starts now. Out of curiosity, statistically, out of all the, um, the teams who finished first in the league who won the President's Trophy, only a quarter of them actually won the Stanley Cup. Yeah. Does it even mean anything? Does the President's Trophy mean anything? Well, I mean, you, have, you guys have on, uh, on, on the uh, possible uh, picks is the 2010 Washington Capitals, who I believe won the President's Trophy, and they then did. were eliminated in the first round by the Montreal Canadiens. Um, so no, it doesn't mean anything. Because like every GM says, once you make the playoffs, anything can happen. There's, there's a flip side to that coin, though, which is, is, there, is if, if, that you, if you look at the Kings, for example, the reason I don't take the Kings is because both times they won the Cup, they were low seeds in the playoffs. A, a seeds, yeah. Which is, which is, you know, 
kudos to them for winning, but it takes away the luxury of having a great season, you know? Potentially kudos to you for uh, playing a little bit of strategy there. I'll pass the question over to you guys. We were asking to place these teams who won both the President's Trophy as the league leaders in points and Stanley Cup in the same season in chronological order. Detroit Red Wings, Dallas Stars, Colorado Avalanche, and Chicago Blackhawks is what you selected. The correct answer is Chicago what? Blackhawks. Detroit what? Red Wings, Colorado Avalanche, and Dallas Stars. Way to go, Mo. Chicago was in 2012, hey. 2013. The Red Wings in 07, 08. Avalanche, uh, <sighs> 2000, 2001. And the Dallas Stars, 1998, 99. So unfortunately, so you, did not, that, that. So so you did not get that correct. However, well, you guys have a chance of redemption. Right, you get yes. two picks, and Abbey you get sent one of these guys to the penalty box. Woo! Who will it be? Let's start with your first two picks. <laughs> well, we can't take the Capitals now that I just badmouth them. Can we take our Canadians back? You can't take them back, but you can choose whatever's left on the board. Oh, whatever's yeah. left on the board? For the Kings and the Canucks. We need to pick the Kings. And the, Canucks. Uh, the Kings. The Kings? That's your first pick, your second? <laughs> oh, look at that. The Canucks. Uh, the Canucks. The yeah, Canucks? The final. Nobody the wants a team that was single handedly beat by Yarrow. The 2010 Halak. 2011 Vancouver Canucks <laughs> won their first President's Trophy with 54 19 9 record, but lost the Stanley Cup final to the Bruins at home in seven games. Yep. Its 117 point season is the most by a team who lost in the final. A cup loss was overshadowed by subsequent riots, uh, riots in downtown Vancouver. We all remember that. Yes, we do. All right, those were your two picks, your counter hits. Well. There's only one team left. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, well, you got the Capitals, right? No, we, we, we could take a wild card, couldn't we? You can. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. You can. <laughs> the wild, wild card. Which wild card will it be? We'll wild card wild one? Card two. Yeah. Wild card two. Yeah. yeah, two. Absolutely. Team Red, you've just earned yourself the 95-96 Colorado oh, Avalanche. I like yeah. that. I like that. Boy. Yeah. That's how we do out here. Patty Roy, baby. Sands In their first Lynch. season after leaving Quebec City, the Avalanche capitalized big time on Patrick Waugh as he led them to their first ever Stanley Cup. Finished second in the Western Conference with 47, 25, and 10, getting them 104 points. Well done. Your second pick. You want to go with it again? Yeah, let's do it. I don't want wow, the Capitals. you guys left the wild cards open well, we this whole time. We didn't realize the wild cards were there. Wild card number there. one, the 95-96 Detroit Red Wings. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Came close yes, to the 1976-77 half season record with 131 points. Was the only team to score at least one goal in every game, every game they played that season. However, their playoff cup came to an end at the hands of the 95-96 Avalanche in six games in the Western Conference. What do you final. think of our squad now, Team yeah. Shit? I mean, Blue. <laughs> yeah, your star seems looking pretty good now. I got Sorry, Stars, huh? Team Blue, you've been taking a lot of heat from Team Red. You now have the chance to send one of these fine gentlemen into the penalty box. Who will it be? Who shall we send? <laughs> should we send the big loudmouth? Mm -hmm. Or should we send the smarter gentleman? Well, the thing about Jay is not only is he an asshole, but he's also dumb. So we oh! send Mo to oh! the box. Please. Smart guy. Mo, consensus? Yep. Yes? Yes. yes? That's what we're doing. Mo, you're taking two for the team. Okay. Get in that penalty box. Okay. Welcome to the speed drill. Teams have to answer five rapid fire questions. Whoever gets more correct gets that sweet, sweet MVP pick. Teammates can work together on this one, of course. One of our teams, however, is shorthanded. The good news for them, however, is in a case of a tie, they win. All right, gentlemen, sportscaster and former NHL coach Don Cherry. He's a contrarian, a curmudgeon, and a hockey icon, whether you like it or not. He has, however, said some things that have been pretty ridiculous in his long career, both playing, coaching, and commenting on the game. Which of these quotes did Don Cherry actually say? Question one, was it, Ron, that suit is terrible, just terrible and I'd know. Or, I'm wearing pink for all the pinkos out there that ride bicycles and everything. Yep. Did Don Cherry say, what's with all that dancing? These guys need to spend more time skating and less time doing ballet out there. Or did he say, I know those guys who wear visors or sweeties, but that's a little too much. <laughs> Don Cherry's terrible. Did he say, he was wearing a visor? I thought he was Russian. Or did he say, I've said it from day one, hockey is about heart. If you don't have heart, <laughs> good luck out there on the ice. That's the way he said it. No. That one, right? No, no. This one? Question four. Fighting in hockey is like fighting in boxing. Can't have one without the other. Or did he say, had I survived these attacks, I have no doubt that I would still be coach of the Boston Bruins today and quite likely governor of Massachusetts. Yikes. <laughs> Question five. Did Don Cherry say, they call me grapes, but to be honest, can't stand the things. Much prefer an apple or even a raisin to tell you the truth. Or did he say, how would you like that guy operating on you with those hands? 
All right, gentlemen, it's time to find out how many correct answers you have. Feeling good? Uh, excellent. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm sure, actually. Show us all the right answers that I got. All right, I want to remind you, you are shorthanded. All you need is a tie. So the first question was the suit comment about being terrible or the Pinko's comment. You both answered the Pinko's quote, and that is correct. Well done. I'm wearing pink for all the Pinko's out there that ride bicycles and everything. Pinko's are commies, one, one. by the way. <laughs> all right, the second option that we had was what's all with all the dancing? These guys need to spend more time skating and less... <laughs> What is it, less time doing ballet out there? And the other one was, I know those guys who wear visors are sweeties, but that's a little too much. You both said the visor comment. That is the correct answer. Well done. 2-2. Two, two. Usually when there's less wording, we know it's Don Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> Question number three. We gave the option of the visors comment or the hockey being about heart. If you don't have heart, good luck out there. You both said the heart comment. I quote, and that is incorrect. He was wearing a visor. I thought he was Russian. He was referring to uh, when a motorcycle police officer pulled him over. What I wanted yes, to pick. Yes, when he pulled oh, him over. That's what it was. Man. All right. Doesn't matter. He got it wrong, too. Question four. We have a tie so far. Fighting in hockey is like fighting in boxing. Can't have one without the other. And, of course, the other comment about him becoming governor of Massachusetts. You both said fighting in hockey. Oh, that's wow. Incorrect. Wow. He said, had I survived these attacks, I have no doubt that I would still be the coach of Boston Bruins today. And quite likely, Governor of Massachusetts, I completely disagree with that. He would have never become Governor of Massachusetts. All right. You never know now. Here we go. <laughs> the final question. Oh. They call me grapes, but to be honest, can't stand the things. Much prefer an apple or raise to tell you the truth. And the other comment was something about the operating table, and he wouldn't want to be operated with those hands. The correct what? answer is, would you like the guy operating on you with those hands? Team Red. Mm. Well done, shorthanded, and yes. you have earned the <laughs> MVP, myself. the most valuable pick, which of course is the 1975-76 Montreal Canadiens. And you guys, wow. well, you get the last pick. The draft pool is empty oh, and trivia is done. And that is the end of game night. It's now time for the final countdown. Our teams will now rank their draft picks from 10 to 1 to creating their list of the top 10 legendary teams. Gentlemen, you have 60 seconds, and then we'll see whose list is the ultimate. Your 60 seconds starts now. Many fans remain salty over summer of 1988 when a national treasure was shipped to Hollywood in the trade. But just maybe, just maybe they should celebrate. Gregsky's contract was up for renewal, and the great one knew that he was worth a mint, which the Oilers did not have. The small market Oilers could have been the first Canadian casualty to go south had they kept and paid Gretzky. The 15 mil injected from the trade kept hockey in Alberta. And here's the bigger picture. The trade did for hockey what David Beckham's trade was supposed to do for soccer. The arrival of a genuine hockey superstar into a huge American market helped the NHL explode from 21 teams to 30 teams, including three in California. The trade didn't reinvigorate hockey, it reimagined it. New markets have meant more competitive teams and more popularity, meaning more access to the game we all love. Let's face it, we'd probably be all stuck watching curling on Saturdays had Gretzky stayed in Oiltown. All right, teams, it's time for the reveal. Let's see your list, starting with Team Blue. What do we got? Would you like us to go through this list right now? I just need to know who's the best salesman between you both, because you guys are going to have to sell me on Listen, this. Listen, let me tell you like this. <laughs> The, let me tell you like this. Don't laugh. It's not funny. It's the Detroit funny. Red Wings of the 2001-2002, they had nine Hall of Famers on that team, maybe the most dominant team of all time in that one season. We got the Islanders, who won four in a row. Can't mess with that. What else we got, Elias? <laughs> we got, <laughs> we got the Boston Bruins, who had Bobby Orr. Bobby Orr. And let us not forget about the 1926-27. Oh, yeah. Of which I cannot oh, yeah. name a single yeah, yeah. player. Oh, the Ottawa yeah. Senators. Yes. All right. All right, Tom. Gentlemen, you've heard their pitch what's yours talk to us about your list tell him right now Jay. first i want to apologize to mo Khan for saying uh, who needs okay. him at the beginning i'd also like to apologize to the rest of the world for my parents having children after me so thank you very much hey. sorry about that mic drop all right here we go what are we doing from the top yeah, talk to us about your list just in general. All right. Well, obviously, the Montreal Canadiens, the greatest team, the 1976-77 version, the greatest team of all time, the greatest dynasty was of all time. There was, it was their team, right? Yeah, it was their it team. Was their I believe right. that you guys owned that team yes. at one point. Yes. And then somehow made its way so, across or, yeah. the room in the abstract. It doesn't even, like, it's team not right. tangible. You wish you had just the senators. Right across. It's amazing. And, uh, of course, we went with number two, the Edmonton Oilers, another stacked team full of Hall of Famers, a lot of scoring. One one thing is for sure, your team is stacked. And, you know, I love you guys. But I gotta give it to Team Red. Well done. Oh, you got that the list. Well Thank done. Thank you. Great. Hey, wow. Yeah. 
So much love on the set. I love Should've that. Should have got dressed yeah. up. Team Blue, yeah. well done. Congratulations on all your success, except for here on the lineup. Yeah. Uh, where can people catch you? What's going on? Uh, uh, catch me on The Expanse, a sci-fi show mm-hmm. on sci-fi and space in Canada, or on uh, iTunes or Netflix or Amazon. It's everywhere. And uh, Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, a bunch of DLCs just are coming out. Well done. Well done. Anakin, any new sport anthems coming up? Uh, aside from my one dedicated to the 1926-27 Senators, uh, <laughs> I don't have any sports anthems, but I have a new single called Luckiest Man Alive, and uh, it's out, and it's out there, and my album, Leave It To Us, which is on Spotify, iTunes, get it. Thanks for being here, Team Blue. Appreciate it. Mo Khan, football all over the place. We yeah. see you everywhere. What's going on with you? CFL draft coming out not too far away, of course. Play-by-play assignments, and you can join the Team Red World Tour Parade celebration <laughs> with Jay and I this mm. Oh, one last stab, one last stab. Well I'll done. And Jay, final uh, comment. Yeah, you can uh, hear me on CJAD and TSN 690. And also we have a, my brother and I have a podcast together, believe it or not. We, yeah. we actually do get along sometimes called the Ferrar side. So just look it up. You can hear it on SoundCloud. Thanks, guys, for being here. Appreciate it. Hey, I'm just some guy in a suit. But tell us in the comments who you thought had a better list. We'll see you next time right here on The Lineup. For more awesome sports videos, click here. And be sure to subscribe to Watch Mojo for great content published there.